Now let's consider Henry Thornton, who was one of the most advanced writers on monetary economics for his time. Thornton's lifespan, 1760 to 1815, he was a very successful banker, and he also served in Parliament. He's maybe best known for his work to abolish the slave trade. He was a close associate of William Wilberforce, and later in his life he also invested time in trying to set up a company that would help freed slaves resettle in what is now Sierra Leone. In economics, he's best known for an 1802 book he wrote, and that's called An Inquiry into the Nature and Effects of the Paper Credit of Great Britain. I read this book as really a very modern treatise on currency management and central banking. So, for instance, in Thornton's view, an economy really is very sensitive to sudden restrictions and contractions in credit. He believed that confidence varies a lot, and changes in the state of confidence can vary credit, and that overall it's the job of the central bank to manage this process and to help somehow balance out economic stability. These, of course, are all very modern views. He also had a very clear account of what we today would call the precautionary demand for liquidity and how increases in that precautionary demand can impose deflationary pressures on an economy. In this regard, he is a very direct forerunner of John Maynard Keynes. The emphasis of the book really is on what should the central bank do to manage all of this, and for Thornton, of course, that meant the Bank of England. Other modern ideas which you find in Thornton, one is the notion that wages are stickier than prices, and second is an understanding that given this, if there's some kind of negative liquidity shock to an economy, output will fall because the wages won't fall, but instead workers will be laid off. What I find striking but also difficult about Thornton's inquiry is just how much he is writing like a practitioner. He really was a very practical and successful banker. So when you read Thornton, he doesn't lay out a theory the way an economist would, but he assumes you know what's going on in the world of 1802, and that can be quite difficult, and he reads like someone who is not writing systematically. I don't think that's the right way to think about it. He is very much a coherent and penetrating thinker, but just to pick up Thornton and read it is actually extremely difficult, because it's so much embedded in the controversies of his day. One entry point into understanding the institutional background for Thornton is to think about the bullionist debates. The bullionist debates got underway when the Bank of England suspended specie payments in 1797 due to what was essentially a run on the bank, or, to refer to previous terminology, an increase in the precautionary demand for money. So here, all of a sudden, you have a paper pound, and you start having quite unusual economic events. Think of Thornton's work in 1802 as being a very early statement in the bullionist debates, trying to figure out what problems is the British economy experiencing, where did they come from, and what should the Bank of England do in response. I'll be giving a lot more background on the bullionist debates in our video on exactly that topic. There's even more to Thornton. For instance, Thornton very well understood the notion of inflation as a cumulative process which generates what Hayek and also Vixell called forced savings, namely the notion that perhaps too many resources get put into investment and that this is part of some overall inflationary process of rising prices which can be distortionary. So I've already mentioned Thornton as a forerunner of Keynes, but he's no less important as an inspiration and source for Vixell and the Austrians. Note that Thornton in 1802 is writing in the early stages of the bullionist debates, so he's quite concerned with deflation. But later on in his career, he had some additional writings on monetary economics, and there he was more concerned with inflation precisely because the British economy was seeing more inflation. If you try to pin down Thornton's policy views, I think this is difficult. He was very pragmatic. I actually read Thornton as being someone who thinks that an economy can have a central bank managing a purely fiat currency and that this is a satisfactory state of affairs. I would stress, however, that in the Thornton literature, this is a controversial interpretation and not everyone agrees with it. For more on Thornton, well, what should you do? You can, of course, Google to his inquiry, which is free and online, 
But I think reading that first is not the right way to go. It's simply a difficult work without a lot of institutional background. So one very good source I would recommend, free and online, is an essay by Robert Hetzel on Thornton's Monetary Economics. If you have access to JSTOR, there are two very useful articles by Henry Skaggs and David Reisman, and they're online through JSTOR. For more institutional background, I definitely recommend our video on the bullionist debates. Finally, Thornton is in some ways well understood by looking forward and having some knowledge of Vixal, Hayek, and Keynes, and then we can see precisely why Thornton was so modern and such an important forerunner of so much which was to come later in monetary economics.